Good morning, or should I say, Ni Hao, Shanghai. One of my favorite places in the world. This is my 30th trip over the past five years. One reason why I keep coming back is to learn. Because Shanghai isn't just building. It's building with a plan for decades ahead. It's a city with energy, with confidence, with a sense of destiny, but more so, a city with leadership. And that leadership will have more impact on the real estate we own than even developers and architects. So when we look around the corner and see two and a half billion people moving to cities between now and 2050, leadership will be in high demand. We need mayors with energy, confidence, a sense of destiny, mayors who can help all of us see around those corners. Because in our increasingly smart world, filled with smartphones and smart cars, a smart city needs a smart mayor. From Shenzhen to Rio, from Los Angeles to Shanghai, these smart mayors can drive big change because mayors are often in a better position than even national leaders to help each other get things done. We've all seen it when a head of state wants to work with another head of state. It can take a long time. On the other, <clears throat> on the other hand, when a mayor wants to work directly with another mayor, they can get things done quickly. They can cut through the bureaucracy, the protocol, even the geopolitics. So here's a common obstacle these smart mayors face. Traffic and pollution. A problem that will undoubtedly get worse as those two and a half billion people come to what we're all building. Now we all talk a lot these days about connectivity. I understand it was a topic of a speech this morning. But connectivity is about much more than mobile phones and Wi-Fi signals. It's much more than just electrons flying around the sky. Connectivity is about where we go on the ground and how we get there. And just like in the world of Wi-Fi, we are getting there in very different ways. In the past, sometimes we built transportation after real estate. And sometimes we built transportation before real estate. But now, finally, we are building transportation and real estate at the same time. And that's what's new. Most important to all of us in real estate, the day may be coming when transportation has an even bigger impact on property values than interest rates. So move over, banks. Here comes the bus. Let's take a look at a few of these cities, the mayors who are leading them, the local transportation they're changing, and the impact it's having on local real estate, starting with Los Angeles, California. Inspired by China's high-speed rail, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti came right here to Shanghai to learn how to move more people in less time with fewer cars. Shanghai is where Garcetti learned how to cut congestion and the air pollution that has been suffocating LA for decades. The reason why the mayor has created a plan to build 32 miles of subways in LA, get the locals out of their cars and into city trains. In just two decades, LA hopes to cut the use of private cars by 1.7 million miles each day. 
That's the equivalent of six daily trips to the moon and back. It's a winning formula. Fewer cars, less exhaust, faster trips, and it will mean a boost in real estate values. Now I can tell you from personal experience, telling Angelinos, even a few years ago, to leave their car and hop the train would have been laughable. But guess what? Today, with the second phase of the Expo line now open, more Angelinos are leaving their car and hopping the train. So many each day that the Expo has already achieved its, its target ridership for 2020. For the first time in a long time, you can actually get somewhere in LA in a predictable time. And that reliability is boosting real estate values. Last year, when Tishman Spire bought 520 Broadway in Santa Monica, we made a bet that development would arrive soon after. Housing, shopping, hotels, foot traffic. And to our delight, we were right. The train is carrying so many new passengers to Santa Monica that some property owners have even started shuttles to take people to and from the station. It's another way of saying that LA has gotten more valuable because of Mayor Garcetti's train, the one he learned about in Shanghai. Mayor Garcetti is tackling the age-old LA problem of traffic with Shanghai ideas. He learned a lot from Party Secretary Han and Mayor Yang. They invested heavily in building public transit, encouraging people to leave their cars and take buses and subways, easing the gridlock. In recent decades, Shanghai has built public transportation to replace private cars, and they've invested heavily in development around transit hubs, making a more livable city. The numbers behind this progress are truly remarkable. Shanghai Metro opened in 1993. As of today, they have built 366 stations spanning 617 kilometers. They are the largest transit system in the world, and they're still growing. By 2020, the five existing lines will be expanded Four new lines will open, including one that will bring you right to the gate of Shanghai Disneyland. And when it's all said and done, the Shanghai Metro will be twice the size of the London Underground. Now, Mayor Yang's plans are more than just expanding transportation. They are also increasing real estate values. Tishman Spire's Springs Project in the Yangpu District has office, residential, retail, 10 million square feet, and it's walking distance to the number two line. Not a coincidence. Our Crystal Plaza project in the Chantan district near where the expo was has four million feet of office, residential, and retail, and it's within walking distance of three subway lines. Again, not a coincidence. Bringing advanced, sustainable new transit will allow Shanghai to build on its reputation as being one of the greatest places in the world to live and do business. And with every new subway line and stop, Mayor Yang is building the city of the future, a city where more people travel faster and further with fewer cars and in clean air. It's the very same vision that Mayor Garcetti took home with him to Los Angeles. Further south, in Shenzhen, a fishing village has become China's Silicon Valley. Xu Chin is the smart mayor driving that, that journey, and it's a journey that began with Deng Xiaoping in the 1980s. 
Now, part of that road ahead is a projected 20% increase in Shenzhen's population. They already have 12 million people. So where is that influx going to go? And how are they going to get there? Underground. And amid plans to build the longest subway in the world, even longer than Shanghai, Shenzhen Metro has signed a landmark deal with China Vanka. Vanka is the biggest real estate company in China. They are also Tishman Spire's partner in San Francisco and New York. Vanka has acquired property above 10 metro stations in Shenzhen. And because of this one deal, Shenzhen Metro owns 20% of Vanka. The trade? Vanka gets new property in prime Shenzhen, and Shenzhen Metro gets a big share of the profits. This is the sort of deal that all of us in this room should learn from, because what works for Vanka and Shenzhen Metro could work for all of us. If I could describe this transaction in a single sentence, property and transportation will increasingly become a single deal, even a requirement. Because again, two and a half billion people are coming to our cities. And as much as they'll need a place to go, they will also need a way to get there. Further across the world, in Rio de Janeiro, Mayor Eduardo Pais is taking a similar approach to a similar problem. In his case, though, his partner is the Summer Olympic Games. Remember, Rio won its Olympic Games in 2008, right after the Beijing Games ended. Mayor Price noticed that Beijing and China made sure to benefit from the Olympics long after the Games ended. At Tishman Spire, we noticed that Mayor Price was going to change Rio's real estate landscape. So we invested alongside those changes in several major projects in the reclaimed port area of downtown. Mayor Pice's goal? Use these games as a catalyst to redesign where Rio residents live and how they get there. And like Mayor Yang and Mayor Garcetti, Mayor Pice needed to free Rio's roads and residents from daily citywide gridlock. A big part of the Pice plan? Bus rapid transit linked to subways, finally connecting downtown Rio to the north and western neighborhoods that have been growing with no access to public transportation. It all adds up to a quicker city where you can get further in less time. Part of a grand plan linking buses to subways to ferries, creating a, a ring that will finally truly connect this city. Now, especially interesting to me is a short new tunnel literally dug into the mountain that connects Baja to Santa Cruz, cutting travel time and creating some terrific development opportunities. But here's what the tunnel really means. You no longer need to drive dirt roads winding through the mountains to get to work. You can now reliably commute from Santa Cruz to downtown unimaginable a decade ago. And downtown is where you'll find those Tishman Spire projects, projects that are only viable because of the smart transportation vision of Mayor Pice. Like his fellow mayors in Shanghai, Shenzhen, and LA, Eduardo Pice is driving real change on the ground, making Rio an easier and smarter place to live. So where does this lead us? If the 20th century was about driving more cars, the 21st century will be about getting those cars off the road. Where cars once helped cities to thrive and to grow, 
Too many cars are threatening to choke that growth. That's why in cities like Shanghai, Shenzhen, LA, and Rio, the car of the future has become the train. Transportation has always been a big part of real estate. But as more and more people jam themselves into fewer and fewer cities, transportation will become inseparable from real estate. That means get ready for more deals like the one between Vanka and Shenzhen Metro. And it also means that what was once viewed as a perk, safe, reliable access to transportation, is becoming a requirement. Said another way, if you own an apartment or office building that is far from public transit, how are you going to compete with an apartment or office building that is two blocks from the subway? That's why I say transportation might eventually make an even bigger impact on real estate values than even interest rates. Property values have always been about where we build. More than ever, though, the future of those values will be driven by how we get there. That's why I say, move over, banks. Here comes the bus. Thank you.